Hey, what's going on guys? Dana from ModBot here. Today I've got an exciting video. I'm going to be taking you guys through my review and my experience of the Two Tree Sapphire Pro Core XY 3D printer, which is this machine that is right here behind me. Uh, in this video, I will talk about what my experience has been like from assembly to testing and print quality. And uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and give you guys some feedback on that. So before we get into it, uh, let's take a look at the printer. So again, this is the Two Tree Sapphire Pro, which is different than the Two Tree Sapphire S, as well as just the Two Tree Sapphire. I believe that there were two previous versions. Uh, as far as I know, the Two Tree Sapphire Pro is their latest version. That is the one I'm talking about. Some of these specs and my experience might not be uh, relevant if you're looking at one of their older or different models of the Sapphire uh, Core XY printer. So let's go ahead and get into some of the details before I talk about my experience. Let's take a look at the specs of the machine. So one of the most unique features of this machine is that it uses a Core XY uh, motion system, which if you don't know what that is, I will link you guys to an article in the description that does a much better job of understanding and explaining it than I can. Uh, but basically the X and Y motors work together to move the gantry uh, in the X and Y coordinates. And what people really like about these machines is they're typically able to uh, print a bit quicker or quicker than a standard uh, Cartesian style 3D printer and they are also known to be fairly precise. So those are two big things that uh, kind of make this motion system attractive and why it stands out compared to all the other options that are out there. Now this is typically not a motion system that you can find on budget 3D printers. The only ones I know of are going to be uh, the CraftBot, I believe runs on the Core XY system, as well as some of the kind of do-it-yourself, like there's a D-Bot, there's the, um, there's a Anet conversion that's a Core XY. Uh, there, there's quite a few on Thingiverse that you can find, but as far as from a manufacturer, there's not really anything. This machine goes for around $320. There's nothing in that price point uh, that does offer you that Core XY experience. And one of the other things that's really unique about this machine that I have not seen again on a Putting this price point is that the X and the Y, um, they're not using smooth rods, they're actually using linear rails. And linear rails are also typically more rigid and more precise than uh, the typical like LMAU bearings on smooth rods. So it's something that is attractive to a lot of people. And uh, again, usually it's a premium upgrade to a kit printer or it's something that you have to spend a lot more money to get. So to get those things stock is kind of, uh, kind of crazy. So the build volume is 235 by 235 by 235 millimeters, which I believe is somewhere between eight and nine inches roughly. So if you are um, wondering what the build volume is, that is it. It is not huge, but it's still a decent sized build volume in all reality. I hardly ever go over an eight inch by eight inch by eight inch setup. Um, but you know, depending on what you need, that is something to consider. Uh, it's got a BMG clone extruder. So BMG is an extruder that's made by a company called Bontech based out of Sweden. They have a, uh, they make a few different extruders, but they're known to have dual drive gears, which grip the filament, which prevents it from slipping. It's really good for abrasive material. Uh, it's really good for uh, very high precision printing where you don't want any under extrusion. And uh, you know, that typically it eliminates the extruder being the weakest link of your of your printing problems. Um, so this is not theirs, it is a clone knockoff version of it. It's the 
looking at it, it looks identical except for the fact that it doesn't say Bond Tech. It just says, I believe, extruder or dual, dual gear extruder on it. So that's the extruder. Bowden setup with kind of an interesting hot end. Um, it kind of looks honestly like an older, almost MakerBot E style hot end that some of the older kit printers that I uh, tested out came with. The base of the machine is made out of sheet metal. The arms on it are all aluminum extrusions. It's got a 32 bit board and it is very quiet with the exception of the BMG dual gear extrusion. When it has to do retractions, it is quite loud. So I did want to uh, definitely point that out. So the last two quick features I want to point out is it has power loss recovery, it has a filament runout sensor, and it does have a really nice little touch screen that uh, is used to interface with the printer. Uh, it's fairly bright and it's very responsive, so I do like the touch screen on it. So that is enough about the specs. Let's go ahead and get into what my experience has been like with this machine. So the machine did come really well packaged. Um, there was nothing missing, which is great. Nothing was damaged, which is also great. I took everything out of the box. It came with a printout manual that was fairly thick, uh, which is nice. I always like when they include an actual physical and not just popping it into a computer and having it on a micro SD card, because if you're not near a computer and you're like me building on your floor, then uh, it's nice having that paperback right beside you. Um, I will say that I've been very spoiled with the kind of Creality style machines I've been reviewing over the past year pretty much exclusively that are assembled in you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, 45 at the most. Um, this definitely did take a bit longer. It's not as crazy as some of the kits that I've done previously that have taken me like a full eight hours, but it did take me a couple hours to get this all together and get it wired up. Overall, the instructions I thought were pretty um, uh, sufficient, but I did think that they could use some more uh, clarity when it came to the wiring section of it. Um, not exactly what to plug into where because that's not too difficult. There's a photo of that and you can read on the board, you know, fan one, fan two, extruder, so on and so forth, but more where to route the cables. Um, some of the cables need to go in through some extrusions, some need to go up and over the top gantry. Um, when I first did the wiring, I went to home the printer and the cables bunched up and prevented it from homing and it made a like grr, 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 like vibrating sound that many of us have seen when an end stop's not working correctly, which made me then have to completely do, undo all the wiring and redo it, which could have been prevented if it just showed like, this is the direction. And I guess, you know, you know, hindsight's everything. And if I would have looked and kind of thought things through a bit more, I could have figured that out. But I certainly think that for, it wouldn't be hard to add. This is where these cables route through. This is where these cables route through. So that was kind of the only thing I felt was lacking with the machine. Um, once that was all said and done, there was one issue with the machine and that was that the Y stepper motor was wired in the wrong way. So it wasn't really being hit or it was being hit sometimes, which it could still print fine, but sometimes it was doing that like sound I just did where um, it just wasn't triggering the Y end stop. So it'd keep going for you know 15 seconds, whatever it is. So I basically just had to flip that around so that way it was facing the correct direction. Uh, and once I did that, it was fine. So I turned the machine on, was greeted by the beautiful LCD screen on this machine, which again is really nice. Um, I homed the machine, took a piece of paper and went ahead and leveled it with the uh, leveling screws. I can't remember if there's four or three on this one. There's three. <laughs> so I leveled, uh, I leveled the three screws on this machine. It was good to go. So then I went and hopped over to Cura, downloaded a Benchy. I don't know why that was the first one I chose for this, but I downloaded a Benchy and I sliced it as is just completely stock for PLA. And when I went to print, there's a couple things that I noticed. The first was that it was pretty difficult to get filament to actually feed into the hot end. Once I maneuvered it and actually got it through the throat of the hot end and out the nozzle, it was fine and it was pretty free flowing, but it seemed that my filament path was not very tight or not very straight because that was one of the more difficult experiences I've had of, you know, cutting the end of the filament exactly at an angle and trying to fish it through. And when I finally got it, it seemed fine for the moment. And I went ahead and printed out a Benchy, which turned out okay. It wasn't a bad Benchy, but I clearly could tell that my retraction needed to be adjusted. It was just not set up correctly. But while I've had this machine over the last couple of weeks, I've successfully printed out a pretty awesome uh, Darth Vader bust, as well as a low polygon skull, which both turned out, in my opinion, really nice. I'm happy with the quality of it. However, there's been quite a few things with a combination of the hot end as well as the extruder that have been pretty frustrating. The, extru uh, the hot end is the main thing again. When you're changing out filament, trying to get it to go through that initial path, it is been taking me five, 10 minutes to try to get the filament through, which finally ended up resulting in some filament breaking off inside of there. And it's now, you know, waiting for me to disassemble it. So that way I can repair it. Um, and on the BMG style extruder, the clone, I have had a lot of issues with the tension arm. So uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm not gonna get into the, the what a tension arm is. You tight, tighten the tension arm so that way it puts an adequate pressure on the filament and that way when the stepper motor turns, it feeds it through. Well, 
even when I tightened it all the way tight, it seemed to, to not grip the filament correctly. And so what I ended up having to do was getting like pliers and doing more so than my hand could even do. And that seemed to help, but it still was slightly under extruding until I literally took my hand as it was extruding and squeezed the thing. And then it seemed to extrude no problem. So, um, I tried quite a few things. My theory is that potentially my clone was not machined correctly or not injection molded correctly. There's some slight um, stuff wrong on the internals of it. So that's been quite frustrating actually, um, a combination of that and the hot end. So I kind of am at a certain point with this machine where I have how I feel about it. And I think that this machine has a ton of potential. I think that for $320, an all aluminum frame with linear rails, a 32-bit system running a Core XY motion system, like that's, yeah, I think I said the same thing twice, but uh, it's crazy. That is a lot, I don't know anything, even ballpark pricing that has those features in it. The hot end on mine totally blows and the extruder on mine seems to be faulty, defective. I don't know what the deal is. So. I certainly think that if you were looking at getting this machine versus like a standard Creati style machine that I think I would go with those style of machines because right out of the box they're a much better machine. However, if you've already got a machine or you just straight up want a project, I do think that this machine, if you were to swap out the hot end for say an E3DB6 or a Mosquito or one of those new Dragon hot ends and again maybe your extruder is better than mine, but, or, you know, swap out the extruder, that it's a really solid base platform for 320 rough dollars. So, uh, again, I think that Sapphire, if they did fix those two things, I think that they need to change their hot end design. And I think that they're, again, extruders, whether it's mine or whether it's just these clones aren't that great compared to the real deal. Those two things, if they can fix those, I think they've got a really solid machine, but as is, I definitely was a bit let down with the current state of this machine. So this has been my first rendezvous with a Core XY machine that I've personally owned myself. I do believe I'm going to throw an E3D V6 on it over the next couple of weeks here if I've got a moment. Let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in me following up if I throw an E3D V6 on it, if that solves all the issues I've had and I'm just knocking out great prints. Uh, I'd be curious to know whether you guys would like to see a follow up on that. And uh, if you've got any other questions, let me know. Again, I know in the end I kind of said a lot of issues with it because I wanted to make sure that you were clear with the experience that I had. However, if you are looking for a platform to build off of, I do think this machine has really good bones as a structure to, again, do some modifying to, uh, like so many hobbyist machines that um, I've gotten in in the past. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you do want to find out more or do decide you want to purchase one for yourself, I also will link links in the description. Uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, it's always greatly appreciated. I've got some really awesome stickers and cool different rewards. And uh, as always, thank you guys for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. This has been the Two Tree Sapphire Pro, and I am out. Peace, guys.